Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Cafe Talk. We have a very special episode for all you beautiful listeners out there. Uh, first of all, we hope you're doing well and staying safe. It's still uh, pretty rough out there for everybody, but you know, hopefully, we could bring you some joy and peace, or maybe just some friendship, some companionship, whatever it may be. Uh, but thank you so much for listening. We have a very special guest with us today but for now we'll, we'll get that real quick to her uh jolyn how you doing you know with my, my co-star beautiful delicious big booty boy how you doing i'm doing okay uh you know i'm excited for this uh podcast and it's a very special one as you said and i guess without further ado we'll introduce her uh it's our friend rose yeah how you doing rose i'm all nervous um hi podcast listen podcast listeners <laughs> Yeah, that's our, our we we that's our friend Rose. She uh is first time ever doing a podcast. Uh so don't worry, you know, Rose, just just be you. Say hi to every all the beautiful listeners out there. Hi listeners. Well yeah, my name is Rose and I'm excited to be here on the podcast because I love podcasts. I enjoy them myself. So I can only hope I bring the same comfort and enjoyment to you guys as well. Yeah, thank you. So so for this special podcast, everybody. We're going to be talking about a specific topic. It's not going to be a Christian Minecraft server, just a heads up. All right. This may not be for, for the little kids ears. You might want to adults only sort of stuff. It's fine. You know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> uh, but Jolyn, tell, tell the audience what we got planned for them. Let them know, buddy. Oh, man, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> Well, was... I'm, I'm kind of like opening it up for, for conversation because I'm like, I feel like I'm the only one talking here. <laughs> so Rose... Um, aside from being our wonderful friend, uh, she, I, I don't know how long ago, I want to say like half a year or a year ago, you started an OnlyFans and you've seen some, some success, uh, with that. And, you know, we just want to like pick your brain a little bit about it. But before that, uh, maybe you want to, you know, introduce yourself. I mean, you already did introduce yourself, but you want to tell us something, tell the people a little bit about you. So, et cetera. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what could I share that'll make me feel comfortable? All right, huh? Or how how has uh, quarantine been treating you? I know that's how's yeah. quarant- I've been trying to deal with quarantine the best that I can. I feel like it's definitely difficult mentally quarantining, but yeah, you know, we're just like everybody else. We're all just trying to get through it. I'm trying to find ways that are healthy to cope with little interaction without also putting myself or like my family at risk you know I see. Um, but yeah doing my best i recently uh just recovered from getting covid so and as well Ooh. as like the rest of my family so we were we're bouncing back from that Ooh, oh how was God. how was that for you guys did you uh did you guys experience any like harsh symptoms or how was it i got mild to I got mild flu symptoms, which was like, I got a fever and I got congestion, but my dad and my brother experienced very severe um, symptoms and my dad's 62. So he had it the worst. Ooh, yeah. Like he ended up, he was the only one to end up at the hospital on a ventilator. Oh man. And that was definitely scary. Like I definitely like feel like I lost my mind a little bit. I, I myself, even though like I wasn't, fully sick like my dad and my brother i guess it was just like really scary to me to be for like the roles to switch because my brother and my dad have always been like the i guess caretakers slash protectors of me so like to see them at their lowest was hard yeah we we can imagine that must be tough yeah i agree because um victor also got covid like around christmas new year's oh wow yeah, yeah. Yeah, and oh. then my family, uh, except for my mom, uh, we got COVID back in like May, May of oh, May or so June the, of twenty twenty. Like early. Yeah, and I'm I'm in the same boat as you. Like my sister and my dad had it really bad. Like we didn't bring my sister to the hospital, but luckily, like both of my parents are nurses, so we had um, oh. like we had like a an oxygen machine for people who need like uh, long term oxygen treatment. Uh huh. We had one of those and we would supplement my sister's oxygen at night because it would, um, it, her oxygen levels would drop to like almost 70. Oof. Wow. 
Yeah, so I'm in the same boat as you. I understand. Like, it's it's really scary, but I'm glad to hear that everyone is uh, fully recovered or is on the road to recovery. Yeah, we're no, we're fully recovered. And even my dad, um, you know what's the funny part? I mean, it's funny now, but, like, I was so sad back then. Um, the week that I found out. So I didn't get t- tested until, like, later that week. So I had gotten sick first. And then I'm like, maybe it's just, like, the flu. I did go and skate with my hair wet at nighttime and i'm like maybe it's just that oh okay so i got sick the 14th of december and i found out that i tested positive for covid on my birthday december 18th so like that friday i found out i got sick um so yeah to me yeah to me i'm like wow what a way to bring in 20 yeah some bad news on your birthday right there yeah i also took that as a reality check i'm just like maybe this is life telling me to slow down and like and not try to be everywhere yeah not try to be everywhere like jolan said i also got covid like during christmas time and and it was um like i got i I, it was similar to yours i had uh like a flu or like a cold it wasn't a flu it was just like runny nose and um i had no coughing and no fever but it was just uh stuffy nose and uh, even then with those symptoms, I, I I told the people at the coffee shop, I was like, hey, I'm not going to be coming in. It's best if I just don't work. So even if it is a cold, I still just don't want to pass it on to you guys. Luckily, I did quarantine myself as, as soon as I did, because later on when I got tested, I came out positive. And I was very fortunate that my family, even though we were all positive as well, they didn't get heavy symptoms aside from just like cold and flu symptoms. But mm-hmm. there was one day when my dad was like, he had food poisoning and we didn't know it was food poisoning. So he had like, like he was very pale and his, his, his like blood pressure was really high. And that just scared me half to death. I was like, I'm going to need to rush him to the hospital, to the ER. And Mm -hmm. look, luckily as soon as he, you know, got rid of the food poisoning, he threw up, uh, he was much better, but that, that for sure. Like you, I had a, a huge scare where I was like, damn like that that was too close of a call you know it was too close for comfort (laughs) heck yeah and you know what's uh weird like my dad before he but before like we were we confirmed that like he was sick sick my dad had swore that it was just food poisoning that he had gotten and like he didn't want to get taken to the hospital or anything and then by the third day we're like okay this is definitely not food poisoning like you still wouldn't be feeling like so horribly you know yeah that, that, that's how my parents were as well they didn't want to go to the hospital uh if, if any symptoms came up for some reason and i was the one that was like you have to go if it gets worse like i'll i'll keep you here i'll let you stay here since your eyes are okay but if anything gets worse i'm rushing to the hospital whatever you say whether you want to or not <laughs> yeah. yeah my brother was the exact same way <laughs> yeah well i'm glad to hear that everything worked out um we do have like a question that we ask all of our guests uh, i don't know if you're comfortable answering this but when was the last time you you pooped your pants <laughs> um, yeah it's, it's serious <laughs> it's serious i i mean you don't I'm... have to answer but we like the other guests that we had we it's a question that we asked them as well yeah it's just the fun games and stuff i mean i guess if you want the honest opinion i like honest honest answer I worked at this coffee shop called Bulletproof Cafe. Oh, I know that place. Yeah, so they put butter in their coffee. And as good as that tastes, like somebody who's lactose intolerant and, um, you know, coffee is just like a natural laxative. Yeah, yeah. One day I had made, this was probably like 2009 december or like maybe 2020 january sometime early last year uh-huh. um i just had one too many coffees and like i've never experienced that in my life at least not in as a grown uh grown up like maybe when i was little but like i had uh-huh. a moment where i almost like pooped my pants but like it came too close of a call that i would say that was like my closest call Ooh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Yeah, so just so that way we don't, like, have you, we didn't put, like, the limelight on you. Uh, yeah. Just to quickly sh- yeah, just to quickly tell you, like, my last time was, like, in eighth grade, and it was, like, a conscious decision. Like, I, <laughs> oh my God. Like, I, like, weighed my options, and somehow I was, like, it's better if I just poop my pants now and then deal with it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
Um, I love that story. <laughs> you know what? I have pretty bad memory. I can't remember if I pooped my pants in elementary. And same thing. With, okay, middle school for sure. I do not think so. If you ask me when was the last that uh, when was the last time I pissed my pants? Now that's a different story. I would tell you like two weeks ago, but that's a different story. <laughs> all right, it's all good. It's just a fun joke. It's just a fun question. Yeah, and uh, just just a heads up. Rose here is uh, a very very proud or uh, very beautiful. Very uh, she's very body positive. If if that's what I'm trying to say, it, it, am I am I okay? With saying that rose is that correct yeah i i like that term uh body positive i would say that very so so she's very you know she's she's very uh into you know accepting yourself you, you loving yourself loving your body she herself has started an only fans account for any of our listeners interested in that so that that would be our meat of the podcast uh that's definitely our our main our main topic right now for later on what i really i'm, I'm sorry to trick everybody right now I really am kind of interesting though in uh, Rose's uh, roller skating hobby. I guess if you want to say that, or or what is it? Activities. Uh, I don't yeah. know. What yeah. That. Such a tease, Victor. <laughs> I know. It's just. I mean, we gotta keep them. You know, coming back later. You gotta hear hear out the rest of the podcast. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm also interested because I I do follow you on Instagram and I see that you you're very you're a very avid ro- roller skater or just skater. I don't know what you wanna. Uh huh. To me, that feels very like vintage. Like when I think of like roller skating, I think of like those seventies like rinks and like uh, roller derbies and stuff. And I myself in middle school, I learned how to ride a skateboard. And like Jesus Christ, I I clearly remember it like if it was yesterday. Just that entire week or two that it took me to fully be comfortable on top of the skateboard. I remember having so many falls and so many aches and injuries just trying to, you know, perfect my balance and stay on top of the board. And then also learning new tricks. That was a whole nother story for that. But uh, I'm just interested in asking you, Rose, um, how was it when you were like learning how to skate? Like how long have you been skating? So I believe I had I believe that i bought my roller skates in like 2018 when i was still working in downtown la at a whole foods and i'm just like i would i got into it because i saw um this person that i actually met through the coffee shop that you guys work at or used to work at i met this girl there that was selling thrifted clothes and then later on i saw that she started roller skating and she just posted like from the get-go she posted like the very beginning when she first got them and then how she would practice every day and just seeing her like be so determined and put herself to get better and better and actually work on that like I love to see the process and the progress that she achieves so to me that inspired me to get my own roller skates but yeah I think I started in like 2018 or 2000. No, you know what? I bought them in 2018 and it took almost like a whole year to get them. So 2019, I want to say. Oh, okay. Just like I mentioned, you know, with my whole story of like, you know, the aches and pains, because I remember when I was first learning how to skateboard, like the first time I went on it, (laughs) I, I got both my feet on the board and I was like rolling down like an alleyway. And and I don't I don't know how it happened. I guess just loss of balance. The board just slipped from under me and all my weight landed on my left like hip. And my entire thigh for like the next week or so was just aching and sore. And I had like a bruise there for like a good like four days. <laughs> Have you ever had any like injuries or or how was it uh, when you were first picking up skates? Like, like, did you have any bad scrapes or anything like that? I've definitely had bad scrapes. I think my worst one to this day was like falling in a bowl just because I like... I let my feet come together so then my wheels hit and as soon as I was going to drop into this bowl I my wheels got stuck together so I literally dropped into the bowl like not jump in but like I went in head first and then like my body slammed Ooh. on the floor after and oh, it was like man. a good like 10 feet high so like that hurt Ooh, that was my last ouch. ball and like I still have a pretty fat brute a pretty fat bruise on the side of my leg from like the slam yeah Eesh. 
I just so happened to get that injury and then not so long after get COVID. So I had a lot of time to heal. Oh, that's good. But like, yeah, I had a, it was a little bit difficult after that fall. Like I cut pies for work at the moment. So using my wrist that I fell on was so hard. Ooh, did, did you sprain your wrist or anything? It was just really sore because I try to, uh, obviously like the first reaction is like to try to catch yourself. And I'm, yeah. like, trying to unlearn that, but, like, I still tried to catch myself. So, like, my hand, like, slammed the floor, but it was more like the palm of my hand slamming the floor. So, like, my my palm got, like, um, bruised a little bit. And, yeah, Ooh. it was more just so, like, a little bit of pain, but um, it healed up. It's fine now. Oh, that's good to hear. The f- Funny story, little quick side tangent. When you brought up the whole, like, learning how to fall. It it just sparked this memory because without realizing, I don't know how I came to this, but apparently I know, I, humble brag, I know how to fall. And, and it's not like I've had many falls in my life. You know, fucking the skateboard thing being a perfect example of not, not falling properly. But Jolyn, you've seen me fall before, like when we were moving a, a furniture and I fell backwards. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and 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 for some reason now whenever I I I feel my body tumbling, I it like instantly kicks in like the second instinct and the instinct I have is just to roll. I'm like I'm falling backwards, sideways, whatever. I just start rolling and I like obs- turn like the the downwards momentum into sideways momentum and I just avoid any injury in the future and it's like like I'm not I'm not a a skater i'm not i haven't like fallen off a bike or i'm not very active but it's just weird how my body just learned how to fall <laughs> out of nowhere it was just just crazy but yeah just i was gonna say just a light flex so you can fall yeah just you know humble brag right there <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh yeah that's that's cool though like um how how is it skating right now do you still go out or like um have you not gotten the chance to enjoy yourself uh so i have gone out i ended up so i got cleared to be able to go out again like mid-january so i have gone out a couple of times oh that's good when i did go out the the first couple of times to go roller skating it was really hard because one thing that covid did affect me with is my breathing breathing. Yeah. yeah so i would get shortness of breath like i would skate I I before I used to put myself to skate for like three or four hours and I thought that was normal like people had I met people in the roller skating scene that that made me think that that was normal to go part to go like park hopping or like to just be at the skate park for like hours yeah Um, so for me like be pre like getting sick I would spend hours at the park and like, yeah, I'd get tired, but then like I'd get tired, take a five minute break and then get back to it. And I thought I could do that when I was noticing that like I would get like shortness of breath. But then after attempting that same tactic, like it wasn't working out for me, but I have been able to go out and skate. I'm I'm not able to skate too much just because I feel like right now, like skate parks uh even though they're open like a lot of people go and they don't wear masks so it's still like a big risk even if you do wear a mask yourself because it's like yeah you could wear a mask but like still there's things that like the virus could get stuck to like surfaces and it dies out in a couple of days but still that possible that one possibility that one slip up like always gets to me so I haven't been too out as much roller skating as I would like to be just because of that fear in my head. Yeah, no, that's that's perfectly reasonable because, you know, especially if, if others are not wearing a mask, it's like it only takes it's like one little trip or fall or just like as you're going upstairs or something like that. And you never know how it could get you. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's good, though. At least you're, you're staying safe. You're being considerate for your family and yourself. Yeah. Uh, Jonah, do you have any questions? See, so, yeah, as someone who's uh, locomotively, uh, someone who just doesn't have good locomotive skills, like I, ha- I have good hand-eye coordination, but I, I can't skate, I can't roller skate, I can't ride a bike. As someone who is like that, I, I don't understand you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've you been isolating you, man. 
I was going to say, you can't do anything that you say you can't. How do I want to put this? <laughs> you you can't do anything. I mean, I guess. No, I, I, I know you where you're. Do, yeah. I'm yeah, like, I know where you're going with this. And uh, like, sure, I say I can't. But more realistically, it's like I've tried and given up to uh-huh. to skate, to roller skate, to ride a bike. Uh, and at this point, it's just like. I don't know. I'll probably try again when I'm like a dad or something. Like it's not it's not convenient right now, so it's like not really top pro- priority to learn. So you're good. <laughs> yeah, and especially since I I like drive everywhere now. I'm just oh like, my why do I need a bike? <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Hey. Yeah, maybe right now is not the time. It wasn't meant to align with you at this very moment, but maybe in like five years, you'll pick up a skateboard and be like, oh, this is what I'm missing out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm not good at falling. Like when I fall, it's like like straight out of a movie. It's super dramatic. It could be like the tiniest <laughs> thing and it's like I broke an arm. <laughs> it's like it's like uh really old people when uh they could break a hip by falling two steps. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there goes Jolin. Don't yeah. worry, my falls are very dramatic, and then like when I see myself on the camera, it's like it w- it looks like I just tripped over nothing. Like <laughs> I I get that I'm very dramatic when it comes to falling or getting injured. Uh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I know how to fall, so I'm good. <laughs> no, it can't be all Mister Blessed by the Gods to have amazing falling abilities. Right. <laughs> you know, some of us are not cats in this world, Victor. We're like cows or some or like goats or something when we fall it's just bam uh excuse me sir i'm not a i'm not a cat i'm a level nine pyro fox all right uh don't even start with this <laughs> i'm just i'll just mess with you guys oh man so last question about this topic rose i just wanted to ask you um do do you do you roller skate as a hobby or do you want to like just like actually get professional and, and maybe go into tournaments and stuff or are you just doing it for fun and and the freedom that it gives you i do it for fun and the freedom that it gives me i also i mean i would like to expand this from more than just being a hobby it would be amazing to be able to work um to work representing what roller skating is in this day you know i feel like right oh. now in the media um roller skating is having a lot of light shined onto it so now there's a lot of artists there's a lot of businesses that want to involve like roller skaters in their promotions or ads they want they want to look like they're in with the times and so it'd be really great to be able to be a part of this whole to be a part of that in this time where roller skating's having a comeback and I mean, okay, let me not phrase it like that where it's having a comeback because roller skating has always been around and alive. But I think just now they're starting to shine light on it again because there's so many young creators like bringing a lot of attention to it and like basically trying to reinvent roller, not reinvent it per se, but like the way they represent roller skating and serve it to like this day and age of the youth, like is really catching their attention. So I feel like that's why roller skating is becoming so big. And like, everyone wants to be in the know of roller skating, but yeah, it'd be, um, I see it as something that I do to help with like my mental, to help with like my health overall. And it's just something fun. And that brings me joy, you know? Yeah, I mean, I I guess you can equate it to like um like the photography community and Polaroids. Like Polaroids were a huge thing, and then when digital came out, they only hardcore followers and like hardcore photographers would still use Polaroids. But since uh so many like uh TV shows and artists, like I think like one of Taylor Swift's cover albums has like a bunch of Polaroids on it. Yeah. Or, or I don't know who else has Polaroids, but like because it, there's a surge in, a resurgence of Polaroids, it's becoming a it's coming back into the limelight. Yeah, and that's essentially what's going on with skating. If I'm not, I if feel I'm not wrong. I feel so because I can't per se I can't I don't want to say that roller skating like died out or anything because 
honestly yeah i mean there were like uh like people who still were avid skaters even when it like kind of phased out of popularity like there were still cult followings there were still people who were roller skating yeah Uh, but it didn't really like totally die out yeah it just i feel like what brought a lot of attention to roller skating was tiktok and like instagram uh mainly a lot tiktok actually people getting creative on there and the way they would make their videos it caught every everybody's attention yeah i could see that social media helps out a lot in spreading the news into like you know something new to discover or enjoy all right um jolene do you have any final uh remarks on roller skating or anything else you want to add uh no i feel like we covered a lot about yeah roller skating. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you for this uh, inside look on roller skating, Rose. It was really helpful. Yeah, I, I'm glad you guys even brought it up because um, I could go on. Like, there could be a whole other podcast on just roller skating. Hey, maybe we might. We might uh, invite you back and we'll do a roller skating podcast. You know, the hint, hint, wink, wink for all our listeners over there. <laughs> there we go. But as for the, the meat of the podcast, we could, like, move on to to our main topic, I suppose. Like we mentioned before, uh, Rose has an OnlyFans. You know, go follow her if you if you wish. You know, OnlyFans has been growing into popularity recently from you know stars and just like uh, content creators that they want to either interact with fans or they want to provide a different sort of uh, outlet of media to their fans. And that's what OnlyFans is for. And you know, they can they can pay to get specific videos or 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 pictures from their you know favorite creator and rose is one of those creators and the main question we want to ask is just like how how's the experience been for you i mean i can't say that i mean it definitely is an exciting experience experience i guess for me at least like i've always been interested in sex work so to have something like only fans pop up in that time that I was thinking about it without actually me having to get like physical or anything and being able to do it in the comfort of my own home and stuff is really awesome. But so far, you know, my experience with OnlyFans, I feel like I'm still just starting off because I'm still like a little bit under a year. I'm barely going to come up on a year um, of being a content creator. Um, wow, you, I, you, you barely started out uh, pretty soon, right? Yeah, like, I uh, I believe I made it in May, yeah. Wow, and you're already one of the... Of last year. Uh, what, what are you, the top 64% of content creators? Oh, top 34. Damn, hey, all right. Congrats. Hey. Nice. Thank you, thank you. It is, it definitely, I, I will say this, it is a lot of work. I know a lot of people like to make jokes, like, I'm about, like, forget my real job whatever like i'm gonna go fuck around and make an only fans like it's not as easy as everybody makes it makes those jokes yeah it's actually like a lot of work and it can be draining at times like when i was sick i did not create anything because it i was already emotionally drained and i feel like it mm-hmm. just takes a lot of energy to create content even if it's just like taking photos like it still takes it still takes something out of you to like put it out there and advertise yourself. Yeah. Cause it's like, it still requires at least your energy to do so. And it's like, since you do have fans following you, you want to give them uh, the best, like you want to, you want to be on your top game for them. Am I right? Yeah. And I am. Another thing I will mention is like, it hasn't always been so smooth for me, I guess. I know I, there's times where, in the beginning, I neglected my OnlyFans and I wouldn't really give it much attention because I wasn't taking it so seriously in the beginning. I was sort of just like, why don't I have fans like right away? Oh, But yeah, like I was under that impression as well as like, oh, this is easy. Like anybody's gonna like, you could just get followers easily. And it's it's not really like that. Like unless you already have a big following, unless you already have like a big following or like a big social media presence with a platform, it Mm -hmm. does take some time and like work to get fans. Cause even though your account exists, it's not being like shown to anybody. So you have to, you have to advertise it to, 
for you have to advertise yourself a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, yeah, I figured the most popular people that that they hear that they have an OnlyFans, they already have like fans on TikTok or YouTube or even just like you know any social media like Instagram and tic- uh, Twitter. So it's like it's easy to just transfer those fans from one social media platform to another. Yeah, like I've I've had people ask me like, how do I have like, well, like how I said I'm in the top thirty four percent. I've had people ask me, and I know. It- they don't mean it to come off rude it just like it comes off sort of rude when they'll ask me like Uh why am i at this place but like this person who just joined like last week is at like a higher place than i am and it's because like you have to take those um things in like they probably either have their pricing really low so like a lot more people can have access to it or you know they just already have Mm -hmm. a big following yeah, it's like multiple factors. It's not just a simple factor of like, like oh, you're attractive or, or oh, you provide good content, therefore you must succeed. It's like there's multiple factors behind all that stuff. Yeah. So um, I actually, I've had different friends that, you know, like you mentioned, that they were like, oh, uh, you know, I'm struggling with money or, or life isn't how I want it to be right now. So maybe I'll just make an OnlyFans. Ha ha ha. Like they joke around like that. And one friend was actually serious. She was like, like, hey, I was actually thinking of making one, but I'm not comfortable 100 percent showing my body. And, you know, I don't I kind of don't want I'm kind of scared of like people, you know, stalking me or like getting obsessed with me sort of stuff They, you know, they had those natural fears of the online community. And I told them that, you know, you don't have to start off with showing your face like you could just show your body or specific parts of your body if you're comfortable with that. So I just wanted to ask you, Rose, like, were you the same? Like, did you start off showing, like, only specific parts of your body without showing your face? Or were you comfortable, like, right off the bat, just going, like, full on, this is me? Beginning, I started off with just, like, showing my body and not really my face. Just because um, in the beginning, I was so iffy about, like, how serious I was about doing this work. Like, I wanted to make sure that. I was 100% before, like, I completely dived in. So I would just show my body, but, like, my name, well, like, my nickname was connected with, like, my account, which is Rose. So um, Mm -hmm. I started off slowly, and then I got comfortable enough to the point where, like, I would show my face. But for me, I guess I didn't think about those. I I did take in, like, the fear of more so, like, getting recognized in public like oh okay in my neighborhood or yeah just in general getting recognized or like having uh, more so having like somebody in my family find out about the kind of work that I'm doing that more so played in um I don't think the first thing in my head was about um online stalkers Uh uh-huh at least for me Mm. well yeah but I mean it's still like OnlyFans is still pretty safe right like you, you don't really have to worry about that because you don't you don't have to release personal information at all if you make an account, right? Yeah. Besides your um, what's it called? Don't you only release your information to? I mean, the website only fans, but it's not like you post anything personal. And to I haven't heard the this far since OnlyFans been around. I haven't heard of them ever being hacked, and they've been around since oh, 2018, good. 2019. So. They're pretty good so far about that. Mm, I see. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. Yeah. See, so anyone out there listening and wondering uh, if uh, if it's safe, uh, you heard it from uh, someone who has experience. It should be fine. Uh, and again, you don't have to release personal information, so you should be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jolyn, you 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 want to ask anything? You you want to contribute? I mean, I was going to, but he's like. You just uh, you got you two were on a roll. I didn't want to stop the. I didn't want to stop your <laughs> momentum. I will. I was gonna make a statement for the um, listeners. I will say this: that if you tend to make jokes about like, oh, an OnlyFans, but I'm gonna make it about just smoking or something or things like that, like oh, I'm about to fuck around and make an OnlyFans. Just know that a mm-hmm. lot of sex workers already have like a nasty feel about you i 
I can't speak for myself where like I say that I take it very personal, but like I'm understanding a lot that like I could understand where like these jokes may seem harmless to like the rest of us, but to sex workers, it's like you're still sort of poking at the career and at us. So like, and I feel like sex work already has a negative connotation. So I could understand how like asking for some kind of respect yeah so just just to put that out there if anybody wants to get into that kind of work but they also like speak about the work like that just know that not everybody likes that and you'll probably be met with some kind of hostility if you try to ask for help because people are gonna be like i'm not gonna take this girl serious she's just here to fuck around and like mess me up you know, just a fair warning to anybody who wants to like get more into it. Oh, yeah. okay, that's good. That's fair enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, that sounds pretty good because it's like, like I said, you know, I had friends that were curious about this. You know, they wanted to start their own, and they were they were pretty serious about it, but they were just you know cautious, if anything. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good to hear. Yeah. You know, bringing it to the lighter side. Uh, this is a question from Jolin. He he thought it up and. You know, do you, do you want to ask it, Jolin, or should I? I mean, I was going go to ahead. ask a question, Victor. You should let me ask go the for question. It. I'm waiting, I'm for, waiting you. for my opportunity, but, you know, your conversation's I'm, too good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> just wait. It's, it's all rose. She just makes it interesting. Oh, I couldn't oh, hear okay. that. Be good. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to ask because Victor mentioned earlier in the podcast that you're very body positive and um, has... Has that, like, increased or has it changed since you started in OnlyFans? Uh, most people, they talk about, like, uh, the good side. Like, they get a lot of praise. They get followers, subscribers. But uh, internet culture in itself is pretty, pre- like, has a lot of people who like toxic yeah, like qualities. toxic qualities, trolls. Uh, you know, has, mm-hmm. has any of that happened? Or, like, how does uh, has starting in OnlyFans changed uh, or bettered your self-image? Hmm. I think OnlyFans has definitely bettered my self-image just because um, with that kind of work, you do, I'm not saying you have to have like 100% confidence, but like you do have to present yourself like you're very, like that you have to show that you're confident in yourself. Like that's what attracts followers. That's what attracts people to you is like that confidence. So I feel like putting myself on OnlyFans has better improves the relationship I have with my body another thing is like I I tell one way I like help myself feel better at times is like people pay to fucking see me and I'm over here crying that I'm not happy with the way I look in this very moment you know I'm just like uh like that's how I calm myself down sometimes is like I remember like people pay to see me like they want to see this like why am I tripping so hard about how I look right now in this very moment where like at any point of time somebody like I guess just knowing people want to subscribe to me helps boost my confidence okay. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say that. yeah like you have the the evidence there that you know you you are attractive that you 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 do have like what people are looking for because you have the evidence that you know on your account you have all these people that are literally subscribing you for that same reason (laughs) so i could definitely say for me so far my my self-image has gone up for myself because of OnlyFans. um i don't feel like i really be i'm so for me it was a shocker that i didn't i didn't find myself attacking myself or like comparing myself to like other content creators and saying like wow like if i look like this like i would be so much more popular if i look like this person i'd be so much more popular and it's like no i feel for me like a lot of content i think another thing that plays into part is a lot of content creators are like really kind and amazing so Uh uh-huh I find myself constantly looking at other content creators and like retweeting or like reposting their stuff. And it's like, for me, I see it as like sort of self love and like just seeing how, again, confident other creators are like encourages me to do the same. It's, it inspires me to do the same. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah, nice. Now that you brought it up, it actually made me think of a quick question. 
have you ever like reached out to any of those content creators that like inspired you and wanted to maybe collaborate with them or anything like that? No, just because that uh, I haven't reached out to any content creators because the ones that I do follow already do have a big following. And for the most part, they do, even if you're a content creator, they do charge you to do like a meetup and to have like a session with them just because they already have a name for themselves. So like their time is money. So you do have the opportunity to like do content with other creators, but unless like you're their close friends or something, they will most likely charge you um, for that, for that session, for that playtime. I see. You know, you know how the old adage goes, you know, you got to make money, you got to spend money to make money, you know, that, that, that you might spend a lot reaching out to the content creator that's very popular or that you enjoy seeing themselves. And then if you collaborate with them, it might like, you know, bring fans to your account and, and that might help you out in the future, like in the long run. But that's just, that's just an idea. Yeah. And I definitely like respect though. Uh, I respect that. And like, I'm a hundred percent for that, like charging like, I'm glad that everybody feels comfortable enough to, like, I guess I'm glad to see that nobody feels like they have to do work for free just because it's, like, another content creator. Like, no, like, you're allowed to charge, like, yeah. other sex workers to be a part of your work. Like, obviously, they specifically want to work with you for a reason. So I definitely respect that. And, I mean, I hope I can get there one day. I just personally haven't done it myself where I reached out to another content creator because um, I still have like other investments where my money goes for my own work. So I don't have a budget really where I can fit somebody else in. Oh, OK. I see. All right. Uh, I do have like a, a question. I don't know if uh, if you'd be able to answer it. But do you know, like, correct me if I'm wrong, OnlyFans is like very heavily female dominant. Like, you don't really hear about male content creators on OnlyFans, aside from, like, Tyga or something? Yeah, it it is very female-dominated, I would say that, the website. I have seen a couple of male content creators. I don't know how popular their pages are, but I have seen a couple, but it's always, like, very few. Yeah, I don't see that many males on there. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying I want to like start an OnlyFans or anything, but to maybe a guy <laughs> out there who's listening, who has that, and it's like, that. and they they feel like they can capture um, a market. Like I don't know, having like a dad bot or something. Yeah, like uh, maybe this is their wake up call as someone who isn't very self body positive. Like you should do it. You should go for it. I love that. Yeah, I feel like there definitely there probably is definitely like. Uh, men like that out there you know what i actually like in i've met like not really met but like talked to somebody online who was like very self i guess self-conscious about like their body image but like in reality like they i mean to me they had nothing to be i didn't believe like they needed to be so self-conscious but i could understand like obviously they could be in a different headspace but yeah, like I definitely have heard that from other men that that's one of the things that sort of keeps them from like doing that kind of work is like that body image. And it's crazy to think like men feel this way because I feel like guys are so good at like reserving themselves and not showing that self-doubt or like they don't really show their issues, I guess, as much as girls. Like they're good. They're good at the portraying uh, an image of confidence. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I get you. Exactly that. Yeah. Honestly, I feel I feel the same way. I feel like you know, if if there's a guy out there that would like to start an OnlyFans and has this like mentality saying that like, no, it's only for girls. Like only women do that. But it's like they they're still curious or we're like, you know what? Like I I kind of I'm down to do that. Like I've always been interested in maybe starting something like that. I feel like, you know, they should go for it. You know, it's it's like you said, you know, just uh, be confident in yourself and and the, the the fame or at least the the fans will come, you know, naturally. Yeah. Oh, I don't But I didn't want to take I didn't want to take this away from you uh, talking about like the men's side of OnlyFans. Um, but there is a question that I wanted to ask, like if you 
Uh, have you ever gotten like any because i know you can request stuff on OnlyFans. like they would tip you and say like oh i want you to do this um like have you gotten any weird requests or any like weird uh people in your dms <laughs> i think i've gotten anything too weird i all of our definitions of weird is different so for me personally i don't i have been in their mind <laughs> no yeah, yeah. have you gotten anything? <laughs> okay. I like... like like if anything if anything, it's not like technically weird, but but if more more like, have you gotten anything that you weren't a hundred percent comfortable doing? You know, like you were just still like iffy on whether you should do it or not, that sort of stuff. There was something. I mean, there was something that there was a request that made me very uncomfortable, just because it it's something that I don't see normal. So like to me, it made me very uncomfortable when somebody even brought up the idea. Uh, I guess I'll share it since the question was already put out there. I mean, only so, if you're comfortable. We don't want you to, no, you know. Yeah, I, I'm com- yeah, you don't have to. I'm comfortable. Like, it was just a weird question. Like, it literally, it caught me so off guard. Like, um, there was this post that I had made with my friend's cat. But, like, I was chilling at my friend's house, but I was chilling naked. So, her cat was, like, laying on me naked. And... Like, I just made, like, little videos of, like, her cat laying on my chest. And um, I had a fan, like, DM me asking me to, like, make them custom work. And they're all like, you should play around with that cat. And I'm like, no. And I just blocked them (laughs) because I thought that was so fucking creepy. And he didn't say it like that. Like, oh, you should play around with that cat. He, like, literally told me to do certain things to the cat and i'm like hell no like the cat is not a part of my work the cat is just a fucking cat and it's literally chilling with me oh Oh, damn okay yeah like it got into they were obviously into some weird shit that i was not about so i just like i just that was a little too much (laughs) for me (laughs) that's that's actually a first i've heard (laughs) myself i've never really heard anyone ask for that sort of request before (laughs) yeah like i i only brought this question up because there's another podcast that i listen to uh it's called frenemies with uh trisha paytas and ethan klein uh and trisha is a only fans uh worker she also does other stuff but she's on only fans prevalently but she has like a famous story where when she was like a teenager like someone paid her to like put a candle up her butt or something Uh uh-huh oh yeah and it like I, I don't know it was just like she talks about weird requests all the time so it's just like how prevalent is that like how often does it happen yeah. <laughs> yeah that was the weirdest request i've had but um i've never had anything like that personally all right fair enough i just you know nice all right um well how, what do you say jolene do you think uh this 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 makes up for a good podcast right now uh i do have one last question and it, i think it's a good question to to end end things on and off on yeah. yeah in in your case rose like what what was the thing that kind of got you over the edge from just saying you wanted to start an only to actually doing it uh because oh, like like victor question. said he had like a friend or something that dabbled with the idea but ultimately thought it wasn't for her but it's like a lot of us have these things that we want to do like us included when we were doing this podcast you know we we thought about making a youtube channel we joked around about it then we got serious Mm -hmm. but the thing that kind of got us to actually start doing podcasts and start the youtube channel was like when we put money into it when we actually bought a microphone that was like all right there's no backing out from this anymore yeah, it's like we 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 spent the money, we we committed to it. Like we gotta do it right now, even if in the future we decide to back out. At least we could say we tried. Yeah. So was there was there something like that for you that kind of made this serious and like got you over the edge, or is there uh, or like what kind of advice can you give someone who's like on the cusp of wanting to do this but isn't ready to take the plunge? Yeah. So for me personally, I was in like a financial strain. And that made me take the plunge. So I had lost my work in like mid-March. And it was just really hard to find work in the beginning of the pandemic. So I honestly didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't have any plans of going back to school because I just know in this moment, it's not something that I could keep up with. 
So I just gave the chance to OnlyFans and I felt comfortable enough to do to take the chance because I already followed a couple of content creators that post about their experience and that po- uh, share like tips on their pages. And I, I guess I could say like I've, I've been doing my own little research prior to starting OnlyFans. So that made me comfortable already knowing like a lot of information that I knew being aware of like how what I needed to do in order to make it successful that really helped me. Yeah, what to expect. Like what to but expect. yeah, ultimately for me in the time that I lose my job, what is it, March, April, and then me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like in that time since I couldn't find work, like I started getting really like I really started questioning like when is the next time I'm gonna make money? Like when is when is the next time I'm gonna have work? Like all the only kind of work I've been doing involves coffee and coffee is very like hands on like it's not something that you can do really from the comfort of your home so that's why I gave yeah. OnlyFans a chance but I would definitely recommend people to like look into the work look into content creators work don't expect it to be easy yeah okay that's pretty sound advice yeah definitely well uh any last remarks Jolin? Uh, no, I mean, Rose, it was a pleasure having you uh, on our show. Uh, I think yeah, this was a really so good conversation. I definitely learned a lot oh, about what fans. happened. Uh, and I learned yeah, a lot about too. I learned a lot about you as well. Uh, we were friends through a mutual friend, but I feel like now we're actually friends. Yeah, I mean, I thought we were all friends, but yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I <it's> just... <laughs> Dude, but I, would, I would only Sad see you bag. at the shop and like i rarely go oh to the shop oh my gosh i think all i i feel like if you've made my coffee before that's like a special bond right to me i guess in my head i hold a special place for coffee and the people that make my coffee so <laughs> oh yeah to me i i saw our friendship as in like oh that's joel and i could say what's up to them if i was to just see them myself you know but yeah we're we're friends we're all cool friends now you guys know a little bit more about me (laughs) and like the work that i do yeah and and we really appreciate for all the information and being so uh open with us and welcoming us and we we really appreciate you and thank you for joining us on our podcast you know we we had a lot of fun and maybe hopefully in the future you you'd be interested in joining us for another episode later on but as for, for now like thank you rose uh thank you joel oh, uh, wait and before we you. before you close it off um rose do you want us to yes. like i don't know if we can put a link to your only fans in a youtube description but we can definitely link your instagram yeah oh, we yeah can, we can do um, anything. if you guys want to link my instagram or like yeah. uh i mean i would prefer my only fans but you could do my instagram too just because i i personally don't put my only fans link right in my bio so nobody would be able to find it really unless they watch my story but yeah i could give i could send you i'll send right now in in these dms of discord i'll send you my link and then you could copy it from there yeah that there you go everybody uh check the description down below in the youtube video and you could uh check out rose's only fans yeah Um, any last things no you know uh i feel like people are more than welcome to come and ask me questions you know as long as they're not disrespectful and i guess if you're a man and you would like to ask me a question subscribe to my only fans and then you can dm me and ask me a question through there all right well you heard it here first nice definitely so uh yeah well uh thank you everybody for listening We, we really hope you enjoyed this special podcast uh, once again, thank you for our special guest, Rose, uh, for joining us. And thank you, Jolin, for being as sexy as usual. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, in the next podcast. And don't forget to like this video if you liked it, if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to our channel if uh, you don't want to miss future episodes. Uh, if you're on Spotify, remember to follow our page and uh yeah you know just a reminder uh, the link to rose's only fans is down in the description below and we hope you have a great day everybody yeah bye everybody